Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history behind Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book. On December 30th, 1865, Rudyard Kipling was born in Bombay, India, the son of British colonists. His father, John Lockwood Kipling, worked as the principal of the Gigi Baihoi School of Art. The elder Kipling traveled to India to help preserve the art and architecture of India during British rule. He wound up working as a curator at the Lahore Museum, something which Rudyard chose to include in the first chapter of his novel, Kim. Kipling's mother, Alice MacDonald, came from a family of artists, including Edward Byrne Jones, and her extended relations included the future Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. The young Kipling spent his early childhood in India, much to his delight. He relished the sight of extraordinary animals, incredible sights and scenery, and trips to the bazaar, where every type of good in the world could be bought and sold. Unfortunately, at the age of six, the Kipling parents sent Rudyard and his sister Beatrice to England to begin their schooling. For Rudyard, this experience proved devastating. Rudyard and his sister stayed in a foster home, Lorne Lodge in South Sea, which they later called the House of Desolation. They spent six years under the thumb of the widow of an old Navy captain. She not only proved a stern disciplinarian, but went out of her way to be cruel to them. When she realized how much pleasure young Rudyard got from his books, she took them away. When he smuggled more books into the house, she took those and made him go to and from school, wearing a placard that read, Liar, around his neck. These horrific experiences inspired Kipling's stories, Blah Blah Black Sheep, in 1888. At the age of 12, he finally got a hold of his mother, and she sent him to attend the United Services College in North Devon. This proved another unhappy experience because young Kipling endured much bullying his writing talents and gave him the chance to earn prizes for his great talent. Nonetheless, the harshness of Kipling's childhood became a recurring theme in his literature, which often depicted brutality and severity. In 1882, Kipling, much to his joy, returned to India to work as a journalist, and during this time Kipling immersed himself in everything India had to offer. He went to the bazaars, he went on jungle safaris, and he visited the brothels. His time in India inspired him to produce a variety of prose, verse, and short story collections. Upon his return to England in 1889, Kipling would be well received as his reputation as a poet and short story writer spread there. In the next three years, the publication of Kipling's Barrack Room Ballads allowed him to become a revered poet. Barrack Room Ballads are written from the perspective of English soldiers lamenting the harsh treatment they endure at the hands of their officers and society in general. Though they fight the Empire's wars, they are held in such low esteem that they might be denied seats in the theater and constantly called Tommy. An 1890 poem called Gunga Din depicts the British soldier's regret at treating an Indian named Din poorly, and they admit he is the better man, despite the casual racism of Kipling's age. <coughs> Kipling had been good friends with the American writer and editor Wolcott Ballastier. Sadly, Ballastier died late in 1891. Kipling ended up marrying Wolcott's sister, Carrie Ballister, in January 1892. Kipling's family disliked Carrie, considering her a loud-mouthed and opinionated woman. Before then, Kipling's romantic life mainly consisted of trips to Indian body houses and flirtations with older and unavailable women. Soon after the wedding, the newly married Kipling family found their fortunes ruined in what would become the Panic of 1893. They used their remaining money to buy land from one of Carey's other brothers, Beattie Ballister, in Brattleboro, Vermont. 
There they built their dream house, a long, narrow, and green shingled house called Naulaka, which means jewel beyond price in Hindi. Even before Kipling settled in the United States, his reputation preceded him. Two towns in Michigan named themselves after him, Rudyard, Michigan, and Kipling, Michigan. Perhaps in part because of that, Kipling chose to reinvent himself and write the great American novel. He started a series of local color sketches, which he soon abandoned. Instead, he started a children's book called The Jungle Book, around the time he and his wife expected their first child. Despite spending years in India, Kipling chose to set his story in an area he never visited. Thankfully, several other British explorers visited the area, and he drew upon their accounts in writing his most famous books. Daughter Josephine was born in 1892, and her father, Rudyard, gave her a special copy of The Jungle Book for her first birthday. On it, he wrote, This book belongs to Josephine Kipling, for whom it was written by her father, May 1894. The Kipling family soon grew to include another daughter named Elsie and a son named John. The Jungle Book is a collection of short stories that first appeared on bookshelves during the year 1894. The second Jungle Book would be published in 1895 and contains more stories linked by poems. The most famous stories tell of Mowgli, a South Asian boy who is raised by wolves and learns lessons from the jungle animals, both his friends and his foes. Much of the trouble in the Jungle Books arises from the law of the jungle, which insists upon individual responsibility, both to oneself and to other creatures. It is summed up as the strength of the wolf is the pack, and the strength of the pack is the wolf. Yet plenty seek to ignore the law for their own pleasure or advantage. They include the tiger Sher Khan, a ruthless predator who hunts humans because he is too weak to hunt animals. The jungle dwellers also have to deal with the mindless and pleasure-seeking monkey people, or banderlog, who famously say, We say it, therefore it must be true. They are often wrong, of course. While most remember the Mowgli stories, they only make up part of the jungle books. Like Kipling's tales about Mowgli, Ricky Tiki Tavi is about relationships between humans and animals. In this case, a mongoose seeks to protect a family of humans from a pair of deadly cobras named Nag and Nagina, who also seek to kill for pleasure. Despite two successful books, Kipling never truly settled in his new home across the Atlantic. By 1896, he chose to move back to England after a falling out with his wife's family. His brother-in-law, Beatty, jumped him during a bicycle ride and the two got into a fight. Kipling filed a lawsuit over his injuries and his damaged bike, and the trial turned into a media sensation. And even before then, journalists had a habit of pushing their way into the Kipling house, and if Carrie and Rudyard didn't tell them what they wanted to hear, they would simply make something up. A deeply frustrated Kipling took his family back to Britain. Later, Kipling said, There are only two places in the world where I want to live, Bombay and Brattleboro, and I can't live at either. Sadly, Josephine only lived to be six years old. Both she and her father came down with monomia in 1899, and Mother Carrie chose to care for the two of them in separate households. While Rudyard survived, young Josephine lost her life to the illness. Her last words were, Give my love to Daddy and everybody else. When Rudyard heard the news that his eldest and favorite daughter had died, he simply rolled over and said nothing for days. Josephine's death left Kipling heartbroken, and he never truly recovered from this terrible loss. Yet, her brief life inspired her father Rudyard to write the Jungle Books, which are still treasured and enjoyed to this day. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.